Hello and welcome to Adventure All The Way. I'm Emma and I'm a home educating mum of three from the UK. And if you're new here, welcome. Here we talk about home education in the United Kingdom and neurodivergent family life and all that comes with being a mum of three. If you are a returning viewer of subs or subscriber, thank you so much for coming back. It means the world to me that you are still here and still supporting my channel. So you will have to excuse the reflection, I can do this all the time, but then I've got like 30 chins. So um, if or I can do this and you can stare at my nose. But if I look directly at the camera, unless I'm on the side, you have got the glare of the new ring, ring, no, oh, it's not ring lights, the new little lights that I have on my uh, new phone tripod because I've been using my phone to film things uh, instead of my camera. And I, I was like, I can't keep balancing it on my knockoff Stanley cup, uh, balanced up against the straw because it's just not stable. So I, um, spent like 20 quid on this cool tripod that's also a selfie stick that also has these cool lights so and as I am filming at half to seven at night it is needed because it suddenly got really dark hasn't it in the evenings <clears throat> and on the subject of it getting dark in the evenings that brings me on to what I wanted to talk to you about today I wanted to tell you a little bit about our faith and it's something that we have talked about in one of my previous videos when I asked you uh the viewers what you wanted to see one of the things that the comments said would really like to learn about paganism, how that works for your family, what's it like mixing it with home ed, what do you teach them, and all that sort of thing. So here is the first one of that. And as the title suggests, oh, this is really annoying me. I'm gonna have to like, yeah, yeah. Um, as the title suggests, what is Samhain? Now I know it looks like Samhain, but I promise you it is not. Uh, you can say it in lots of different ways, depending on maybe your heritage or your practice. Um, but we say Samhain or Samhain. It's my dog being upset. What's wrong? You okay? So Samhain is one of the Sabbaths of the Wheel of the Year. So the Wheel of the Year is what we call our collection of festivals throughout the year. There are eight of them and they're spread reasonably evenly throughout the year. The biggest gap is seven weeks and the smallest gap is five. So it's like, as the name suggests, uh, continuously going throughout the year. What? Do you want to be on camera too? Do you want to come here? Come on. Come on. I shall pet you while I'm filming. Excuse all of the rubbish in the back. Okay, what if I turn around? There's you! This is Taylor. You will have seen her in my previous videos. She's now 22 weeks old and she's ginormous. She's also a Labrador, so she has very high attention needs. <laughs> Lick mummy. Right, perfect. Now you're happy. And the festivals, we refer to them as Sabbats, which literally just means festival. And the first one in the Wheel of the Year, at least what we deem as the first one in the Wheel of the Year, is Samhain. It's celebrated on the 31st of October, uh, not to be confused with another thing that people might celebrate on the 31st of October, although uh, it's said that Samhain is the root of Halloween, like the root origins. So the biggest thing about the Sabbats is something that I always say to people when I'm explaining them to them, which is eat, drink and be merry because that's what we want. We want to have good food. We want to drink good drink. It doesn't necessarily have to be alcoholic. I don't drink alcohol. My husband does. So um, sometimes he will, he won't be merry as in like sloshed, but he will be, um, he will have a alcoholic drink, for example, um, but be happy. That's what we mean. And, um, and then there's one other thing for each of the Sabbaths. Now, if we were going to use that model for Samhain, it would be honour the ancestors. So that's the biggest thing about Samhain is thinking about loved ones, even pets who have passed on. Um, that could be people you've never met. So it could be literal ancestors that are really far back in your timeline, or it could be people you've lost more recently. So for example, I will spend time thinking about grandparents who have passed away. I have three out of my four grandparents who are in um, heaven, for want of a better word. I would refer to it as the Summerlands. I uh, might call it um, the Asphodel fields. Um, whichever kind of thought we're process we're going there. And uh, whichever one we're talking about, um, I will be thinking about them. My husband will be thinking about his all four of his grandparents who have all passed away. Those are the big ones for us. We'll be thinking about grandparents. Um, 
We will also be thinking about pets and then we will often choose to honour ancestors as well. So, for example, I always have a picture of my great grandparents on uh, that I look at and think about them at that time. Do you mind? So one of the things um, that we think about a lot at Samhain is that the we believe it we believe in our house and lots of other pagans believe as well that the veil between uh, here the land of the living and the land of the dead whether you call that heaven the summer lands um, the asphodel fields whatever you want to call it is very thin so um, if you've ever seen the film Coco. It, that's how the um, the dead can pass through if you put them on the ofrenda. That is very, very similar. It's a very similar concept. Taylor, she's happy now. She's found a very high value tube. It's got fur on it. She's very happy. So uh, that's a very similar concept of... Um, a very similar concept um, to how we view Samhain. So we will have a, we call it the Samhain tree. It's a very small Christmas tree that I got in pound stretcher a few years ago that uh, the fibre optics didn't work. It's literally like this big. We call that the Samhain tree. Before we had that, we would gather dry twigs and put it into a vase, but it was always a bit like wobbly and would fall over. What? Seriously, if I'm not being interrupted by kids' dogs. Um, and on that tree, we will put pictures of our loved ones who we might want to invite to spend time with us on Samhain evening. Um, so I will put pictures of my grandparents. The kids will put pictures of lost pets who've passed away. Uh, two of my... Do you mind? It's madness. Madness. Anyway. Um, and so we'll have lots of people on there. We'll also um put people on there at the request of others so we have family members who are not pagan in fact we are the only people that we are aware of in either side of our family who are pagan i think my sister i would say my sister dabbles but i maybe she would class herself as spiritual more than being and she wouldn't maybe class herself as being pagan um taylor what are you doing Seriously, Labradors. Uh, so um, we might put something on the um, Samhain tree at the request of somebody else. And that is simply just because we'll ask them, is there anyone you would like to put on the Samhain tree? It, we liken it to um, friends who are Christian or family who are Christian saying, is there anyone we can pray for? Pray, is there anyone or anything we can pray about for you? You know, is there anyone who's sick or unwell that we can put on our prayer list at church? Anything like that. It's, it's a similar concept that, you know, we want to honour them because we're honouring you at the same time. That's in a sense. Um, for example, a, a one of my best friends, I have a have quite a few people who would be classed as my best friend, uh, but one of my best friends lost her daughter this year and that was devastating for their family and devastating for everybody who knew her. Um, and this, so my friend has crocheted me an ornament that... Um, is what her name was so her name was a thing as well and the ornaments is a symbol of that so we won't necessarily put a picture of her but we will hang that on um as a <coughs> seriously as a um as an invitation to her i highly doubt she would want to spend a sour night with us she would want to spend it with her family but the invitation is there the honoring is there we're honoring her and we're honoring uh, my best friend as well so um <clears throat> so the things that we do at Samhain vary depending on who we're with or what we're doing but for us it's the most important holiday of the year without our ancestors we would not exist if you think about how many thousands of people how their struggles and how their lives had to happen the way they did for every single ancestor in the line before us you know to to come into the world and then all of theirs and so on for us to be here in this life with these experiences with these partners with these children like it's amazing how many thousands of people not only are directly responsible for you being here but are also directly responsible for shaping the lives of others who then shape the lives of you it's insane and that why that's why it's so important to us because without our ancestors we would be nothing and um yeah it's really important to us so we always dress up and sometimes I try to dissuade my children from dressing up scary things because we're not trying to scare anything away. There's this notion of Halloween or Hallow's Eve that things should be scary to scare away bad spirits. 
well we're not spirits no none of those spirits are going to be coming into our home unless we invite them and we are inviting people who are in our family and who are friends and who are pets nothing bad is coming into our house on Samhain Eve so uh, we I discourage them from dressing up scarily because I feel very strongly that it's Halloween and it is not Samhain so this year for example my children are going to be Bumblebee from Transformers a ballerina and a ninja and I will be trying very hard if I can find the right dress to be dressed as Taylor Swift um I have seen a t-shirt that says we are never ever getting back together and I thought I could wear leggings because I'm not really a fan of maybe I could wear like black shorts over the top of, of some leggings because it's likely to be cold and then I might get myself the 22 hat um because she wears all of that doesn't she so um yeah that's what I'm thinking anyway <laughs> uh, my husband does not dress up he is not a dressing up kind of person so we always say that he um until recently he we would say oh he's an off-duty funeral director and or an on-call funeral director because then he would just be dressed in his normal clothes uh but this time he'll be an off-duty postman so there you go <laughs> Where's your, where's your rabbit foot gone? There he is. So, um, so we start off by being dressed up and usually I've spent all day cooking and cleaning. So the, as um, the sun begins to set, I will smudge the house. So I will have usually rosemary and lavender that I have dried, hopefully from my own garden this year. I don't think it is gonna be from my own garden, unfortunately. Um, I try not to use sage because I feel like that can be a little bit cultural appropriation-y. Um, <clears throat> however, I do have some sage smudges that people have given me in the past and I am kind of kind of trying to use them up um, and they last forever. So I just try not to, um, I won't buy any of my own or I'll just use an incense stick instead. Um, we start at the front door and we work clockwise, clockwise around our whole house. We will have windows or a door open because if there's any bad energy or anything like that, it's going to get out if you leave the windows and doors shut, it will stay in and we're trying to make it go away. So I'll move clockwise around our house going up. Like, you know how um, when you're in a maze and you just stay on the left? That's how I do every nook and cranny all the way around. And um, off I go. And I often have a child with me who will be holding um, the lighter and who'll be holding more incense or another, or another smudge so I can switch them out if I need to. It's usually Bessie. Um, in our part of paganism, uh, it's a very matriarchal society, so um, I'm almost like a priestess in it. I'm the one who leads our uh, spiritual things, uh, so naturally Bessie would be coming with me. The boys do it too, but it's just kind of a natural progression that Bessie wants to be doing what I'm doing because, um, I'm, because I'm the one who's doing it. Why are you staring? I have no idea why you're staring. Taylor's just staring at Anyway, um, so we'll smudge the house and smudge each other. I will smudge everybody and then someone will smudge me. It's usually Bessie. Sometimes Phil will do it instead. Then we will head into our dining room for our food. So we will ring a bell because once we've smudged, the bell is like um, an invitation. It's like letting everybody know, including in our house, who, any guests who've come that uh, the ceremony, the rituals, the Sabbat has now officially begun. And it's also letting know any spirits who are maybe waiting in the hope that we put their in the picture um, to honor them uh, onto the Samhain tree that we can come. We do not believe that only spirits who go on the Samhain tree can come. Uh, we, well, those are the ones we're just choosing to honor that particular time. So, um, once we have rung the bell, we begin to um, put our pictures onto the salmon tree and tell a story about that particular person. So, for example, um, I will always talk about my, one of the ones I will talk about is my grandmother, and I'll always talk about my grandmother Daphne and how important she was to me, how she was um, an amazing mother figure to me when I was growing up because I had such, well, let's just say an interesting childhood uh, with not a very good um, example of how mothers should be and my grandmother uh, taught me everything I know about being a mum and when she passed away it hit me really hard um, and it's actually the kind of the catalyst of me being me struggling with this channel was because uh, I really struggled for a really long time with grief from that and so I will talk about my grandmother a lot and I always cry and Samhain is a is a sabbat where everybody cries anyone anyone and anyone who comes to Samhain will cry 
Um, sometimes it's because you're very emotional, because you're sad talking about somebody, or it's because you're so happy talking about somebody. Um, it's it's a really emotional time. So once the once they're on the tree, we will serve the dinner. Now, one of the table chairs at the table will always be decorated specifically, and a place will be um, put there, like a plate, knives and forks, and a drink, a glass for a drink or a mug. And this we call the dumb supper. Now it means um, like a practice supper, I suppose, rather than dumb, like a d like not dumb as it's stupid, but um, yeah, so it's like a practice. And the idea is that you place the best parts of the food um, of each item onto this plate and you put some drink into the cup. And that is an offering to the spirits who are coming. That's their food to eat. It's inviting them to dinner. It's being hospitable to the spirits whether we whether you believe that happens or not or whether we believe that happens or not it's kind of beside the point it's just kind of um again it's about honoring your ancestors not necessarily actually believing that they have come to have dinner with you uh, that's whether you believe that or not is beside the point oh really excuse me <sighs> so once we've said that it's then time for us to eat now the food is always very specific it's food that reminds us of our ancestors or of our loved ones so, for example, um, if my children want to put their guinea pigs on there, we will have carrots <laughs> somewhere. My my grandfather always really liked pork chops when we sorted through his house. Um, when he when he had passed away, his freezer was full of pork chops. So we will always have pork in honour of that. And also of my husband's grandmother, because she did a recipe for us once that was like a famous recipe that she did, but she didn't have the right ingredients. So she changed it to something else, used something else. And now we'll always have um, that to like that almost exact type of thing. Like it has the same ingredients. It might be the same one. And so we honor her with that. And there'll be things like cupcakes to honor one of my grandmothers. There'll be something you know, and so on and so forth. So once we've eaten, um, we will probably have a dance party. Some music will be played because my children love having dance parties and we will uh, sometimes I get my tarot cards or my oracle cards out so we can have a little peek into the next year ahead. Uh, if I've got time, I'll do a 12 year spread of myself and um, we will nearly always watch the film Coco or we will watch Hocus Pocus. Sometimes we watch all three. Um, it is a late night. There is never, never, no one's going to bed early on Samhain. And um, I forgot to say, we've usually decorated the house before uh, beforehand as well. Um, It'll be a very autumnal, so there'll be autumn leaves, there'll be pumpkins, there'll be acorns, there'll be pine cones. Um, sometimes there will be spooky things, but it's usually like bats, witches, ghosts, um, because it's someone is also sometimes called Witches New Year. Um, bats are synonymous with the dark, which obviously we're celebrating the fact that the time is getting darker, as well as the fact that it is we're honouring our ancestors. And then obviously ghosts because we're honouring our ancestors. So it's not usually like vampire, vamp, vampires, vampires. That was grandparents and vampires mixed together. I promise you, none of my grandparents were vampires. Um, it's vamp, not usually like vampires and zombies and werewolves and stuff like that. That's not what we're about. But we will have bats, witches, and ghosts because we love bats, witches, and ghosts. <laughs> uh, also spiders. Also spiders. So uh, that is basically what we do at Samhain. We are also this year um, following the nature study I made that is specifically pig in, in mind. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, I have another free printable for you <laughs> in my shop. I have a link for you and um, I have a link for you to my shop, sorry. And uh, I have a free printable in there, as I said, that is some ideas for you to celebrate Samhain with your family. Uh, there's just, they're just ideas. There's no activities or anything like that. Just to give you an idea. If you maybe feel like you want to honor Samhain this year, uh, give it a go. Uh, also, as I said, we'll be following our Samhain nature study. We're doing that, which has, teaches you all about things that are associated with Samhain and has lots of crafts and recipes and stories all written by me, which is really exciting. Um, and if you would like to use that too, that's also in my shop. So check it out. Uh, that's about it. That is Samhain. That's how we're celebrating it. This year we are celebrating it with Phil's family. Now Phil's family are all Christians and this is not something that they've ever done before so I imagine they are a little apprehensive. Um, however we are putting our best to pagan foot forward and um, 
hopefully showing them a good time uh, that uh, paganism is nothing to be scared of and we're not trying to convert anyone that's another big point uh, we don't if you don't want us we don't want you that's kind of the rule so <laughs> Oh my goodness, the dog. It must be raining outside. You're soaking. Uh, with that note, a very, very soggy puppy who's standing all over my stuff. I'm going to go now and I will see you very, very soon. Don't forget to like and subscribe and check out my shop for that free printable because it's just for you. I made it just for you. Take care now. Bye.